Thanks for tuning in to The Real Deal Show, brought to you by ebodyboarding.com and Tribe Boards. Hey everyone, Jay Real here. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of The Real Deal Show. Today is Saturday, October 16th, and sad news to start out this Real Deal Show. Uh, Our creator, you could say, the inventor of the boogie, as he called it, um, Tom Morey, passed away two days ago on October 14th, Thursday. Um, It's a really, really, um, it's, it's really hard for me to put it into words. It's a it's a, a obviously a sad day here, um, being that Tom had such an impact on so many people, and um, it was unexpected. Tom, 86 years old at the time of his death, he had just turned 86 in August uh, on August 15th. Um, Tom, I mean, what can you say about him? If you go on social media, any bodyboarding related social media right now. Facebook, Instagram, and so forth, you're going to see an outpouring of love uh, for Tom and what he did by inventing the boogie back in 1971, 50 years ago, had a massive impact on so many people. Uh, I don't really think he had an idea of the gravity of his invention. I'm sure he didn't back then. I'm very pleased to have known Tom for many, many years. I first met Tom back in 1982 in Hawaii. I was there for the very first pipeline event. Uh, and um, Tom was staying in the same accommodation. We all were all put up at the Turtle Bay condos. And I have a show about that, one of my early shows about the first pipeline event and Tom was there just kind of mixing it up with everyone but I wanted to go back a little give a brief history of Tom Morey because uh, you know he was such a prolific guy he was more than just the guy who invented the boogie he had so much impact on on so many levels in the surfing world as well Um, but just to give you you know a brief history of Tom for those of you that uh, don't know. As I mentioned, he was born in, on August 15th, back in 1935. Uh, he moved to Laguna. He was born in Detroit, by the way. Total inland guy <laughs> at his birth. And his family moved to Laguna Beach uh, not long after that. And Tom got into drumming. This was really uh, a, another passion of his, probably on par with his surfing. And anyone who's ever seen Tom play the drums... Uh, knows that he's a, he was a super accomplished jazz drummer. So uh, he was drumming uh, throughout his young life there in Laguna and surfing in Laguna. And he went to USC, a very prestigious school out here in Southern California. And he graduated uh, in 1957 with a mathematics degree. So super smart guy. So he had both the left brain and right brain stuff going on. He got married back in 1958. Uh, and worked for Douglas Aircraft with his math degree, and he was a super inventive guy. He had a couple of daughters, um, and eventually he quit the corporate life. I guess, you know, he, he felt the call of the surf, as we all do, and he moved to Ventura and started into the surfboard business. He, I think he opened a surf shop there, and he got divorced as well in the midst of that Um, and at some point he ended up moving over to Hawaii Um, he lived on Kauai eventually moved to the Big Island and got involved oh met Marsha Marsha a super super pivotal person in the whole scheme of the boogie board world Um, and he met Marsha they uh, got married they had four boys um, and um, their names were Madison, Soul, Moon, and Sky. So three boys named Soul, Moon, and Sky. And Madison, you know, it gives you an idea of Tom and Marsha. They were very down-to-earth people. Uh, you know, some might call them hippies. They got into the Baha'i faith. Um, and if you know anything about the Baha'i faith, they're all about sort of sharing the love, sharing 
what you do with others. You know, it's not all about, hey, I'm going to make a million dollars. Of course, you got to pay your bills, but they're very giving and sharing uh, people that, that follow that faith. And what prompted the uh, boogie, the invention of the boogie, I keep calling it the boogie because that's what Tom called it in the beginning. And that, by the way, is a reference to his love for jazz and boogie woogie music. Um, he had a, there was a quote in the Baha'i faith that said, and I wrote this down because I didn't want to mess it up. Confer upon me, O God, thoughts which may change this world into a rose garden, right? So he wanted to, you know, come up with something that would change the world in a positive way. And not long after that, he came up with the boogie, which he kind of cut up with a knife. The, the story has been told a million times. He cut it up with a knife and an iron, used some of the Honolulu Advertiser newspaper to smooth out this chunk of foam. And then he paddled it out at a spot called Honol's, which is on the west side of the Big Island, and rode the board for the first time. Uh, Marsha was the first female bodyboarder. She was actually pregnant, um, eight months, I think, pregnant when she first rode the board. Um, and they felt like they were on something. You know, they thought, man, this, this thing's cheap. It's safe. Uh, it's durable. And they thought, let's, you know, let's see what we can do. So they ended up moving back to California, uh, to Carlsbad, and they started a factory making these boards. They hired some of the people that are the luminaries of the sport, um, names like uh, Patty Serrano, uh, who is still very involved in the sport and was one of my first introductions to that company. Uh, Debbie Caldwell, who started Custom X Bodyboards and still owns and operates that brand. She was one of the first factory workers, as was Bobby Zabad. We all know who Bobby Zabad is. That's the name behind BZ Bodyboards, uh, or at least it was. Um, Bobby's no longer involved with that company, but uh, just so many other names. Joey Gibbs, the, the names go on and on the history of bodyboarding if you're into it you'll read these names uh back and forth uh, on many different um you know websites and so forth um eventually the boogie business oh i should mention by the way when the ports were first being produced tom wanted to call it the snake board and snake was basically an acronym the letters standing for s Side, N, navel, A, um, arm, K, knee, and E, elbow. So those are the parts of the body you use to ride the board. But, you know, apparently people advised them that that was too off-putting to call it the snake. People would be <laughs> afraid of it. So he thought, I'm going to call it the boogie, you know, because I love boogie. I love to boogie, play the drums, and, and so called it the boogie. Uh, so the company was real successful. They were making tons of boards. And I think it, you know, Tom is, is a restless soul. I knew Tom since 82, as I mentioned, and he was his mind was always going, always ticking with new ideas. And, and I think he probably got to the point where um, he was ready to move on. And manufacturing the boogie was no longer something that stimulated him. So he sold it off to a, a company called Kransko out of San Francisco, big toy company who fortunately set up a promotions office in Oceanside, California. And that promotions office basically drove the sport, which eventually became called bodyboarding uh, for many years. They, they set up the first pipeline event. They set up a series of contests they also set up what were called then the mori boogie challenge later became called the jamboree which introduced a lot of people to the sport um, and that promotion effort initially was run by patty serrano now patty that name is super important in the bodyboarding world because she organized this year's 50th anniversary of the boogie jubilee event down in carlsbad in july which many of you attended of course many of you didn't but it was a phenomenal event tom was there marcia was there um 
Soul, their son, was there as well. And I don't know, there was a couple hundred people there with a lot of memorabilia from the early days of the sport. It was a wonderful celebration where many of us were blessed enough to be able to thank Tom again for, you know, his invention and how much it impacted all our lives. I really don't think that Tom had any clue the level that this would get to, you know, like he just wanted a fun thing to surf on and thought, hey, other people might like this. But to become basically a subculture and grow and grow and grow. And now in 2021, it's a it's an, a giant industry. I don't think that was ever on his radar. But what a wonderful chance we got. Thanks to Patty Serrano's efforts to thank Tom for um you know, for his contribution to everything. Like I'm sitting here talking to you right now on the Real Deal Show because of his invention. I'm married to Vicky because of his invention. I have kids. I live here in Southern California because of his invention. You get the idea. Many, many people were impacted positively uh, with his, with the invention of the boogie back in 1971. So Tom, you know, Thank you again. <laughs> um, other stuff, you know, that, that Tom invented, by the way, that were unrelated to the boogie. He had this thing called a fan fold hat. It was like this paper honeycomb hat that he sold tens of thousands of units of. That was a big success, kind of a funky product. I was able to get my hands on one of those about four or five years ago. Somebody brought one in here to the office. Um, and I think I gave it to Tom, as I recall. Um, just because I thought he should have this, man. Um, he also uh, started the, he had the first ever pro surfing contest. It was called the Tom Mori Invitational Nose Riding Event at C Street in Ventura. Um, that was back in the 60s, I believe. And um, it was a nose riding contest and they had a prize purse. So that was the first one in terms of pro surfing event that was ever held he also invented the first interchangeable fin for a surfboard right now we got fcs and future fins that all started with tom maury uh, the concave nose which is a popular thing on longboards, especially for nose riding tom maury um, and he and carl pope uh, invented this thing called the trisect it was essentially a longboard that had that was cut into three pieces and sort of hinged together and had these locks that locked it together so you could fold it and and like carry it like a suitcase <laughs> great for travel so uh that was tom and carl pope's invention um my personal experiences with tom um you know i really got to know tom when i moved out here to southern california because i have sort of a background in music singing and drumming as well and tom knew that so um, a couple times we got to go on the road we did this thing called the maury expression session which was basically an rv trip up and down the east coast and west coast i did the east coast leg and tom would play the boogie song which is all over the internet if you want to see the boogie song um, it's a really cool little tune that he plays on the ukulele, or ukulele, as we say here in the mainland. And um, I would sort of bat, you know, bash around on my chest as a drum while Tom played and sang, and I would sort of harmonize with him. So we had sort of a musical kinship. And Tom, from time to time after that expression session, he would call me or stop by the office here and show me little ideas that he had. Um, in music and also just in general you know he he constantly uh, thought of new ways to do things in fact he had a quote that said the world is an old-fashioned place to me everything I see can be improved and he I think he felt that way right up until his final moments you know he he would never rest on his laurels he always thought of ways to improve stuff um, and he, uh, he was a super interesting guy to talk to. He could go off on crazy tangents. In fact, I'm going to link in this, uh, right about now, an interview I did with Tom on international bodyboarding day in 2017 here in San Clemente, 
where I just got into a long form conversation with Tom and, and got a great interview with him. And you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about. I did edit out some of the stuff that just got kind of way off the map in terms of our conversation, but um, you'll get the idea of how his mind works constantly ticking. Um, and personally, you know, on a personal level, you know, Vicki and I are friends with Tom and Marsha. Uh, they lived here in San Clemente for many years and they would pop in every now and then we'd talk story and Tom would, you know, sign s stuff here. We, I remember we sold, um, these, uh, books and we had Tom come in and sign him. Super gracious guy, always willing to do something to be involved. But, you know, he was a, an unassuming guy. He had no ego. Um, he just was humble and friendly and interesting. And, you know, here at the office, all of us were super, super shocked and obviously really sad to hear of his passing on Thursday. Um, we are so blessed that we got to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Boogie with Tom in July. That was a really special thing for him. And just eight days before his passing, he was um, recognized by the city of Oceanside to, for his contribution um, of the invention of the Boogie. So I think in his later years, this brought a lot of pride and joy to him to hear from all the people that were impacted by the invention of the boogie. So, uh, you know, I'm glad that everybody got a chance to kind of say how they felt. Um, Tom's a wonderful person. One funny story I'll, I'll finish off with here. Uh, I was on that expression session tour with Tom back in uh, the mid nineties and we were in a, an RV. It was uh, Daniela Freitas, uh, Lance and Ronquillo, myself, uh, Alistair Taylor, and it seems to me like Spencer Skipper might have been with us. But in any case, we were down in Florida, and we were finishing up the last promo down in the Miami area, and we had to get to Orlando, which if anyone knows Florida, that's a couple two-and-a-half-hour, three-hour drive. And we had, to, we had to return the RV to a place near the airport and catch a flight. Um, and it was an absolute deluge of a rainstorm hitting. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so we were on a time crunch. We were running late because we had to drive kind of slower because of the heavy, heavy downpours along the Florida Turnpike. And we still had to find a dump station to dump out the black water if you know anything about rving the black water is basically everything you flush down the toilet <laughs> and so the black water tank was full man we had to and we were running out of time we had to go dump that thing and still get the rv to the place get a shuttle to the airport we weren't going to make it so we're driving along the, t the turnpike it's absolutely pouring and tom just pulls over to the median strip which is basically a huge grass ditch that goes down like this maybe 40 yards to the other side of the, the of the turnpike and tom just pulls over and he just steps out of that rv pouring rain pulls the plug on the black water tank and it just dumps everything into the ditch <laughs> so i'm sorry i know it's irresponsible but hey man it's well in the past i think the statute of limitations has expired on that one but just one of the many many funny moments that i remember about tom fantastic person um our condolences to uh, the rest of his family and um there will be a paddle out for tom i don't know exactly when there's going to be an announcement it may end up being international bodyboard day which is always the first saturday in november so that's coming up in a couple of weeks so um or you may you your local beach may want to do a paddle out in his memory as well um so that's it for this episode of the real deal show guys thank you for uh, listening in and um you know again sad show i'm sorry for the content but it, it really celebrates a wonderful life uh tom you have so much impact even now in your passing 
We all miss you, and we're going to ride waves in your memory every single day. Bless you, folks. We'll see you in the surf.